Okay, stream teardown time. This is the DeWalt DCS355 cordless oscillating milling tool. If you pop the cover off, you can see a brushless motor on the right, and more importantly, a whole bunch of electronics hidden and some epoxy on the left. In this video, we are going to take those electronics down to the silicon die level and analyze how DeWalt designed this tool. Brushless motor, what do you mean? Well, I take the back off, you can see how much it coils on the outside there. And the inside, you have the rotor. Rotor is made out of magnetic material. The coils, of course, if you drive them high currents, will create magnetic fields. This is a three-phase motor, which is very typical in this type of tool. Uh, although you see six coils, they're set up in pairs. You basically drive that pair, and that pair, and that pair. If you drive with really high currents, you can get amazing torque out of a brushless motor. All right, let's go find that driver, reverse engineering skills. While drivers consume lots of electricity, that means they produce lots of heat. Lots of heat means a heat sink. Heat sinks are made out of metal. I'm highlighting back and forth there. It's Mark G01, big chunk of metal. Let's take that big chunk of metal off and see what we can find. Well, here's a rectangle. Your item here, this item here, almost certainly is the integrated circuit which drives that motor. Problem is, buried in a bunch of plastic called epoxy or potting compound. Let's uh, take that off and uh, flip it over and find uh, who made this chip. Fairchild. Okay, Fairchild, pretty big company. Now owned by On Semiconductor, they definitely did a lot of power electronics. Hmm, part number FNH44004P. Unfortunately, no data sheet on the web. This might be a custom part built especially for DeWalt. Wouldn't be surprised, and they make lots and lots of tools. Doesn't matter. Let's flip it over. What do we got? Black epoxy cool. That obviously holds all things together, but this white stripe, what's going on there? White stripes are almost always ceramic. This means this is a very power capable part. Uh, that uh, ceramic uh, slug insert is probably going to have some semiconductors sitting on the other side. Let's uh, drop that thing into acid, pop it apart. What do we see? Okay, now we can see the actual ceramic plate here. Uh, more importantly, we're looking at six repeating structures. What are those six repeating structures? Well, they're transistors, of course. They look a little bit uh, fuzzy here because the epoxy hasn't been fully stripped away from the... Uh, uh, the assembly, but the uh, wires here are coming down, big, thick bond wires. Let's take a look at one of those dies a little bit closer and see what we can see. We're going to drop those back into acid, clean them up. Okay, what do we got? All right, we see, obviously, three repeating structures. Well, of course, if you're a fan of transistors, uh, you'd recognize transistors generally have three repeating structures uh, here, here, and here. Of course, what does that mean? Let's take another look. Let's drop it into the microscope and take a real close look. We're seeing a whole bunch of strips here. These are trenches, uh, and this is almost certainly what's known as insulated gate bipolar transistor, IGBT. All right, let's uh, look at what's going to control that IGBT, because in that package there, there's no, there's not just six transistors, there's actually a control IC. What do we see? Okay, we see up here three repeating patterns. Those are drivers, probably for the high side. We see down here three repeating patterns. Those are probably drivers for the low side. Remember, you drive those coils in series, so you're going to have three up, three down. Uh, what else do we have here? Basically, we have a bunch of level shifters. The IGBTs require uh, voltage driving, which is a little more complicated than just driving a pin up and down. That's probably what the rest of this is doing in this assembly here. Okay, uh, the other important part of a DC brushless motor is being able to tell the microprocessor where the coils are. Uh, you're driving really big, powerful currents through these, but the load is very variable as a tool, like a drill or an oscillating tool. As you probably load to it, the uh, microprocessor needs to know that that's occurring so it can actually drive some uh, additional current in. And that's going to be the function of the small circuit board that's actually on the back here. Um, it has, a, as you can see, three identical devices. They're called Hall Effect Sensors. Let's just uh, zoom to another picture to get a clearer view of them. And uh, there are three terminal devices, and basically they have a power and ground in one lead and then a, a signal output on the other. And uh, this is what's going to be used by the microprocessor to determine how fast the motor is going and uh, what kind of loads it's experiencing. So uh, before we uh, get into, of course, uh, the actual teardown of that device, let's just refresh our memory as to what a Hall Effect sensor is. I'll uh, place a uh, link to this uh, rather good uh, physics website that describes that, but basically take a conductor and you drive a constant current through the conductor. And what happens is that a voltage will be induced on the uh, conductor such that it's proportional to whatever the magnetic field happens to be. So you're absolutely identical to what you want. And of course you might think, well, geez, a Hall effect sensor is a chunk of metal. Um, one sophistication that's instantly required is the voltage actually is very, very small. So no surprise when you take that part apart, uh, I found uh, this silicon die inside of it. 
Uh, now, what is that? It's got about seven leads, so that sort of suggests a very uh, limited analog function. We zoom in a little bit here, and we can see a bipolar transistor. The other telling tale here is, uh, here it is, the, the number, uh, 108. If you're an aficionado of op amps, you'd recognize 108 definitely is a legitimate op amp number. And here's the data sheet for that, the LM108. Um, it's just about exactly what you'd expect. Uh, so we have sort of the mystery solved. Probably they took an LM108 uh, or you know, knockoff uh, amplifier. They put some components into a package, uh, laid down probably the Hall effect sensors actually to trace on the circuit board. And uh, they create this, this important component. So this is the next interesting bit of semiconductor uh, that's required for a brushless motor driver. Okay, last major semiconductor is the uh, microprocessor, which controls all this. Uh, it's from a company called Microchip. It's from their uh, DSPIC control line, the 33FJ32. Uh, it's meant for motor control. More importantly, it has um, 32 kilobytes of flash, 2 kilobytes of SRAM, so you can tell it's uh, relatively uh, beefy, actually, when you consider, consider all it has to do is control the motor. Um, however, uh, when it's controlling that motor, it has to do it with exceptional amounts of speed. It's a code efficient, it's got a single cycle, uh, multiply and accumulate. Those are actually really important features when you're doing the control loop. It's probably a finite impulse response filter coming back. Um, that uh, motor has to act very, very quickly to changing loads, so you need a relatively uh, sophisticated controller. Uh, if we were to zip that thing uh, back into an acid bath and uh, take it apart, we'll find the actual silicon die. Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, center portion here uh, is uh, the actual microprocessor and all the digital logic. It doesn't look too distinct because what's happened is it's all been laid out by a machine that was all written in a language called Verilog that compiled down to gates and there are long strings and connected by metal. And that's very typical of any sort of modern uh, ASIC. On the uh, side here, I'll just highlight it. Uh, this is probably going to be the uh, the flash memory. 32 kilobytes. You can see the column drivers as I zoom in. Columns here, rows here uh, with 32 kilobytes, and that's about the right size for it. It doesn't seem like it's protected by metal, so it'd be relatively easy to read the secrets out of it. Uh, I'm sure the vendor probably blew the security fuse, but uh, if you have the sophistication of de-encapsulating a chip and leaving the bond wires on, it's relatively easy to uh, to grab the secrets out of a chip. On the, uh, the side here, uh, with all these blocks, uh, basically it's all the uh, peripherals of the chip. Uh, it has, uh, let's see, pulse width modulators. There's four of those, that ADC, so power management, clock management. They look like little blocks. It's basically they're all designed individually. And then when you do uh, silicon design, uh, you drop down the block. Um, they get reused again and again. Um, this is reinventing the wheels. And then you throw your special sauce, which of course is the actual uh, center of the controller. Yeah, so this is very typical uh, of a controller. Uh, gosh, this would, have been a, this would have been a good personal computer uh, a few decades ago. Uh, but here it of course is a single function uh, to get that motor up to speed, to control its speed very accurately, and to provide the power the tool needs once it, it, it basically encounters a heavy load like driving a screw or, or cutting a board. So. There we go. All right, well, that is a cordless uh, electronics from a DeWalt XR class uh, tool. Uh, the brushless motor here being powered by these very powerful transistors. There's a controller I see inside the power package, so it's easier for the microprocessor to drive it. Uh, some Hall effect sensors, which are just based on some op amps, and then a relatively powerful uh, microcontroller uh, making the show all work so beautifully. So um, if you have cordless tools, you've probably seen them. They're all moving towards uh, brushless designs because they really are quite superior. And I think even actually the, the XR has now have been uh, superseded. There's another family from DeWalt that's even more amazing. So there we go. Uh, that is a uh, whole of the sophistication. And there is a lot of sophistication now in uh, these tools. So hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. Uh, if you want to take a longer look at the silicon dies, I have them up on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.